I wanted to just kick it off and congratulate you. You just had a partnership uh, with the Warriors. Is that correct? Yeah, well, we've been actually serving the Golden State Warriors Foundation for a couple years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually, you know, in recent years have raised $30 million, um, and we're powering wow. a lot of the generosity that's coming in now through that foundation. They deploy it back into the San Francisco Bay Area community, educational system, and things like that. That's really cool. I had a meeting with them to just uh, expand our partnership, and what we're going to be producing for them is different installations of our tap technology nice. which is really really cool so we're looking at different potentials of how to integrate that into the stadium at chase mm. center so that's gonna be fun i mean it's cool i mean we have it at at vive church um we got it installed in our seats mm-hmm. um that's been a cool form of new engagement for our church what i love about it is this is i feel like uh, the tides are turning innovation is happening first in the church now mm, yeah come on now <laughs> and then you know uh outside of the church people are cluing on i think that's pretty cool yeah that's really awesome very cool how did that how did the idea come about um so i actually uh was at a conference and i i met this young entrepreneur that you know created these manufacturing relationships um, where he had pretty low cost and efficient ways to produce the, this NFC technology, right? I mean, this is not new technology. Mm -hmm. Whenever you, uh, tap on a payment processor, um, in person and do something like Apple pay, it's all the same technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think the innovation is taking that technology and putting into a form function and presenting it, uh, with a use case that is valuable for your customer. Mm-hmm. In this case, you know, our primary customer is the church. And so it's so cool because you, you introduce new technology and it just takes different forms and shapes, uh, at Vive, there was a specific, uh, again, net new application to the ecosystem where Pastor Adam, you guys used it as a Christmas gift, We did. um, where, uh, you and Pastor Kara sent it out to all of the Vive members and now we have this cool kind of new habit in our church called Tap Tuesdays, mm-hmm. where Pastor Adam and Kira, you know, uh, present new communications through the church, through this de- device. So it's kind of like this cool hybrid, which I think is the future, right, of kind of physical in real life, like hardware mixed in with digital mm-hmm. uh, software play. That seems to be um, powerful, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just touching on that, one last thing I wanted to talk about was revisiting the app idea that you kind of came up with last week. If you've listened to the pod last episode, we talked about, you know, maybe doing a church rivalry, kind of oh, creating yes. a, new, yes. a new app there. Sorry, you lost me for a moment. Oh, sorry. Every sorry. week I come up with a new app idea. Right, right. But this is one <laughs> I want to push out there because it All was right. on Sunday when Pastor Kira was talking about, you know, competition breeding culture. Yes. Um, during her sermon. And I was just, the thought started racing. This came back. The idea came back. Wow. And I was thinking about, you know, how we did it with um, like the NFL, right? You, the NFL, you have all these teams competing against each other. Yes. But all the players think of it as a brotherhood. No yes. matter what it is, despite right. the fact that you're competing, sure. it's still a brotherhood. Correct. And then the Shield, which is the NFL, yep. is still above it all. No matter what, prize. everything else is above it all. And so the same kind of idea is you could still do this. Like there's different activities that you do. Like we're doing the run challenge of the yep. church. Yep. Um, but why does it have to be just us? You could be other churches all doing it at Ooh, the same time. I like that. And then that's yeah. all part of this kind yes. of system. Okay. So you have this church. church in right. the world. Oh, I love it. There wow. it is. <laughs> so you have all these ideas of this church social app. This is a larger structure. Then you have these things like food drives, all these social goods that you do. Yep. That con- contributes to your like church score. Yes. You have so different good. leagues, competitive leagues like pickleball, you know, because that's yes. a big one. Yes. Um, yes. And then the other one is um, bringing crypto into it because now crypto, if we're talking yes. about it, what if we could tokenize you know, your giving, tokenize potentially your stake Most in the church? generous church. Right. So as you give, as you attend, as you serve, you get tokens yes. in response. And that contributes to stake towards your decision-making at church. Obviously, the founders and the staff have a, a larger percentage of it, yeah. but as a member, you have a stake in the church. Wow. Right? And so this is all part of it. And so we can kind of build what um, might be seen as like more of like a decentralized church. So everybody has a stake. You don't just come to church and leave. Yep. You come to church, you build your stake in the church, and yep. then that affects 
how the church moves every forward. area. So oh, I this like this. Is out there. So just what do you mean it's out there? So yeah. cool. No, 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 this idea. Oh, is out this there. out there. If you want to talk mean? about that? This is come I'm talk like, to me. Come talk to us. I thought you meant somebody's already built this. I'm like, who's this genius? How do we meet them? But wow. I'd love for you guys to talk about it because it'd be interesting to talk about ideas on the high pod yes. that we just kind of give out to builders and mm. builders kind of bring on. Yeah, I'd love to open source those, this yeah. uh, and uh, get some uh, builders onto it for sure yeah. uh, on how to actually make this, I would say, a reality. And you have to know, okay, so here's some things you have to know. I think you have to know the church space, the mm -hmm, nuances, mm -hmm. yeah. but you also have to know com uh, competitive sports mm -hmm. because yes. I feel like it's that competition that's going to breed the ingenuity here to mm -hmm. actually understand, uh, as you said, how do we center around the shield mm -hmm. or oh, the cross? Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, the cross is paramount, mm -hmm. uh, but this is going to deepen our church pride. And how do we keep building the church? And uh, I feel like I could really contribute with some beta churches that would be into this. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need some tech. What do you think uh, it'll produce? What do you think some of the outcomes from this uh, collective competition would breed? I mean, I'm convinced it's going gonna, it's gonna to deepen church pride. Mm. Like it's going to deepen the love for the church. This is where it came from. Remember, I think we we're talking about, I witnessed, it was um, the, yeah. the, the Huskies, the the Huskies in, in Michigan. Yeah. yeah, and people were traveling like several flights, cold weather, tornadoes. <laughs> I mean, you look at the, is it the Bills sitting in the stadium? Mm -hmm. They've yeah, got yeah, fans yeah. shoveling the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And in uh, Buff Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, and they're like literally sitting in the snow know for their football team <laughs> man and the football team does nothing for you right, think right. about what christ has done wow. what the the breakthrough you've had in your church and that deep love for your church to now go man i want to wear my church colors mm. i want to i want to have a flag i want to go into battle mm. i want to defend the church mm -hmm. i just can't see how it doesn't produce this deep sense of church pride fantastic yeah i love that yeah, I, I also think it'll provide an extra layer of motivation um, to do good works. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I felt like there's been a season uh, in, you know, churchdom of like, oh, it's not about works. It's like, well, actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I feel like there's a lot of uh, ways Christ has actually shown through our works. I mean, I, I feel like that's obviously biblical, but um, but sometimes people need... Uh, a, a collective goal sometimes metrics can be motivating mm -hmm. if framed right you know what i mean um i mean th that's why people you know show me the incentives i'll show you the outcome yeah yeah <laughs> right and so you 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 frame the right incentives for society and you produce better outcomes mm -hmm. and i don't think we are going to get away from metrics there's metrics right now they're just not the metrics you want it's it's likes on a sermon post or it's mm -hmm. you know, vanity metrics. It's all vanity metrics. Right. We actually need to get some real hard data that actually can be you know influenced and worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. You know, one thing that I uh, realized, uh, whether it was kind of planted and all predetermined or not, with Vivek, let's just assume for a second it wasn't. Right. right? What was so stark to me is that. I don't know if it was just a personalized feed for me. I'm pretty sure because it, it resonates with a lot of millennials I'm talking to. Vivek was the most poppin' person. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. On Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, probably on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I would assume on TikTok as well because he would repost some of his TikTok stuff on Instagram. He was way more poppin' than DeSantis, way more poppin' than Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. Trump's not, I don't even think, on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. But then when it came to the Iowa caucus, Popping on Instagram does not translate no. into reality. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. And I and I, I I was reminded that oh wow okay, some of these worlds actually some of it is just vanity. Some of it it doesn't actually translate into real results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I see some people, for example, in the church space, you know they're they're popping on social media, but it's hard for them to raise the money or resources necessary to build a building. Mm -hmm. And then I see some other people that are not popping. On, on social media at all. At all. Yeah. And then somebody just posted the other day, uh, one of our friends in ministry, they just raised $11 million yep. like in a wow. day. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, yeah. like, you would have never known who they are. Yep. But they are building something so deep, something so resilient, something so so beautiful in their community. Obviously, $11 million doesn't just pop up. They've been building for years. Mm -hmm. They've yep. been discipling people for years um, to be able to move the needle in their city. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like, to your point... 
a lot of where maybe people's attention was was on these vanity metrics that at the end of the day it, it's not n- nothing like there is some value to it um, well, I think but it's like playing. one piece of like 12 things you and, should care about correct and you you're playing the you're playing in the wrong competition right so if you're going for like to be big on instagram you're almost competing with the attention of the world oh totally whereas the church shouldn't be having to compete for the attention of the world i think we can better with each other Mm. okay and we can build the best thing and have our competition with another church and when i say competition it's that healthy Mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm. get let's be the best football team yeah Mm -hmm. let's be the best church now part of that is outreach strategies which church is great at outreach. Totally. Which church is getting salvations? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously we're going to figure out you know, how, you, how your scorecard looks. But but I think there is a there's definite different approach. When I look at the NFL or I look at college football, they've got something figured out. Well, let's, let's just think about this, right? If we got enough churches on this, we potentially could have the biggest venture fund in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you talk about we could we could effectuate it through the blockchain, right, yep. or we could even just do traditionally, mm-hmm. um, you know, some sort of levy. Yeah. Right. Uh, a percentage base, or maybe in just a raw number. Right. Like to yep. opt in, um, it requires a fifty thousand dollar commitment or whatever. Mm-hmm. You get you know x amount of churches on it. You could have a multi billion dollar fund. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are we going to do with that multi billion dollar fund? We can then use the blockchain mm-hmm. to be able to to vote. Um, you could create a, a DAO, mm-hmm. right? Yep. To vote on the most innovative ideas, the best ideas, and we fund it. Yeah. And it's literally funded by the church for the church. Mm-hmm. We come up with the innovation Beautiful. now because all of our projects are well funded. Um, you start creating this this lighthouse of talent, mm-hmm. right? Um, the most talented builders because as they know there's a, a funding source in the church now. Uh, maybe there's some requirements that you have to have some sort of declaration uh, declaration of faith or something like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. so that its values aligned. But barring that, all the most talented faith-based people will now not just build for the world. They build for so the kingdom good. that will then infiltrate the world. Oh yeah, 100%. And I think you can do all of this where, like you said, there's some faith-based declaration. You have memberships, right? These memberships are all part of this social circle that you're in. And now yeah. you have this trusted where, where am I going to get money from? Well, now I have this venture fund that I really know I can trust yeah. that is trying to do good in the world. Oh, this would be really, really, really cool. So if you're a builder? <laughs> if you're a builder, come contact us. We'll yeah, talk to you. Yeah. I'll help you from the technical side. And you got, you know, the best pastors Let's in the world go. to help you walk through it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, last thing, the next thing I want to talk about. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, are we there already? <laughs> That's great. It's been a long day. Um, <laughs> is that you just had one of your friends um, post about a pickleball um, app that he was building. Yeah. Um, and there was this... Pickleball was blowing up. Guys, Pickleball. I'm sorry. I, I, you guys were... You guys keep, keep, keep hitting me up every time I'm jet lagged. And <laughs> I'm seeing these interactions and I'm like, man, I've got to catch up on the feed. It's a high um, pod boot thread. It's a high, yeah, it's You're a high pod. leaving us on red. I, I am, aren't I? No, I gave a thumbs up, I think. Okay, cool. um, but yeah, uh, yeah, you talk, I'm catching up. Yeah. Well, no, it's just one of my uh, buddies you know, not too long ago, uh, just under two years ago, launched this app literally just for organizing pickleball Mm -hmm. games. They just surpassed 100,000 users. Like pickleball is crazy. It's called Pickleheads. Crazy. It's called literally Pickleheads. And um, I've got my own. It's going to be Pickleballers. And yes. so, yeah, it's uh, a it's competitive. Well, talk about the logo. What's, yeah, what's that going to be? Exactly. It's going to well, be a pickle I mean, with the chain, right? Chain. It's <laughs> going to have like a gold chain grill, and uh, it's going to be more expensive. But <laughs> oh well. It's well, this the, kind of ties into what I wanted to talk ballers. about. Okay. Actually, <laughs> is that you know now with with AI and the ability to like build a team with just one person now, because yeah. you can just like divvy all this out with AI. That's oh, yeah. wild. It's going to lower the bar barrier to entry oh, for, for any sure. of these apps, right? Yeah, for sure. So now it's kind of like the race to the bottom. I know you wanted to make it more expensive, but actually the least expensive offering for all of these services. So if you mm. have... No, like, no, I don't think it has to be the least expensive offering. You're yeah, interesting. I think you can still build a better product mm-hmm. and you just have more margin. Mm. So you have less expense, more income. Right. Your actually margin is more attractive for funding, expansion, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You see, you can grow anything at a fast rate, but you can spend as fast as you grow. Mm-hmm. The, the trick of a founder is to actually grow quick and spend less. It's like when you, you know, look on your personal income. You can get a pay rise, but then increase your expenses and you, you're earning more than you ever have. But how come I'm not making any margin? Well, it's the same with a company. The trick is to go, let me keep funding the things that are growing, but not waste money on X 
amount of stuff, right? Mm. Yeah, I also think that the margin is going to be more disproportionately um, in the area of marketing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, for example, what you're saying is that actually barrier to entry technically is going down mm -hmm. significantly. Like AI is a very deflationary um, phenomena, right? Yeah. Um, and a AI will empower more entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to build pretty much whatever they think of. They can ultimately build it if they learn how to use the AI prompts and the tools that are going to be already actually provided in increasing measure. Um, so what that means, though, is that the competitive advantage will decrease on the technical side, mm -hmm. right? Having deep technical moats will be less and less in, in, until you come up with the new AI breakthrough, mm -hmm. right? So where is the advantage then? The advantage is in the storytelling. Mm -hmm. The advantage is in the deep empathy for the user. The advantage is in your perspective. Does your It's kind of like fashion, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, at the end of the day, not a lot of people have a significant advantage in the fabrics, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? right? But fashion, you have the advantage in your perspective, in the way that you tell the story, uh, in your ability to create scarcity, mm -hmm. in your ability to uh, create a community, right. right? I think that's where probably... Um, the, the tide was shipped a bit in terms of the, the operators that will be really successful. Because it used to be that you could be um, super technical and know nothing about marketing, but because you have the technical advantage, you're going to win mm -hmm. right. in the marketplace. I think that's going to shift a little bit. Mm, right. Interesting. Yeah, and I think my point is is this, there's multiple ways to, buy, like, to build a company. It's not just to have maximum users because mm -hmm. price per user becomes important. I don't need 100 million users at 10 cents a user if I can have 500, you know, million, 500,000 users at a dollar a user, mm -hmm. I'm already doing better with less users. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 that makes sense. But I think the idea was that you can cut into market share really quickly if you undercut the prices, right? Well, sometimes. Yeah, depending on your what target market you have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think there's probably, I mean, in every, in every market, right, unless it's a winner take all type right. marketplace. Um, you know, you're going to have to cater your product to a specific segment mm -hmm. of the market, right? Yeah. So let's take this, you know, stupid example of pickleball. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Pickleheads is the um is the mass offering, right? right? And that's maybe for the the lay pickleballer. Mm -hmm. But maybe the pickleballer app is for advanced players right. mm -hmm. and you have to have a certain skill level mm -hmm. and it's a smaller market, but maybe there's a premium. Mm -hmm to it you know well yeah, i just yeah. think fashion i mean let's take lvmh versus zara mm -hmm. zara's got way more purchases per day mm -hmm. but the uh the product of lvmh uh louis vuitton uh absolutely killing right zara under the water mm -hmm. and they don't have half as many outlets or you know stores or whatever it is so you've got scale and size and affordability and undercutting the market or you've got a premium product as well. So right. it depends on your, your your strategy. Right, right. And it comes down to, like you said, like the storytelling. Like how do you get, how do you convince people that this is the story they want to tell with the product that you're Correct. trying to give them, right? Correct. So, What's the feeling? What mm -hmm. am I feeling? Because I don't think price per garment is probably that much different really when it gets down to the brass taxes between a Zara garment and a Louis Vuitton garment. Mm -hmm. But the story and the feel of wearing an, a Louis Vuitton compared to, you know, uh, maybe a Zara um, I think definitely is in that experience, right? Yeah, and I think the thing that AI is going to maybe disrupt in the marketing space is the ability to quickly create content. Yes. And so now you can create curated content to tell a story for me that's personalized to me yes. and a, you know content for you that's personalized to you and maybe be able to tell more stories and that might be your advantage. I'm a skeptic about the AI storytelling. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Any like uh, marketing, you know caption or or blog post i can tell it had been generated by ai mm. Mm. i don't even know how to you know i don't have the words to explain what i'm experiencing but it it definitely it's soulless yeah it, it doesn't <laughs> yeah no it's, seriously it doesn't it doesn't feel like it has that human soul mm -hmm. um factor to it and i know i don't know what, exactly what i'm articulating and, and maybe ai will get better and better mm -hmm. i'm not sure but it does seem like it's not there yet yeah, because I I'm I think my push towards this uh, response is, yes, cost cutting is definitely a great advantage of um, AI, but that doesn't mean it's cost cut offering. Mm. I think there is an advantage in 
absorbing uh, the the cost cutting so then you actually still deliver a good product, not a cheaper product, right? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and some of the other stuff that's going around, did you guys see that video of um, Cloudflare, their kind of firing scandal? Um, I don't know no, if you saw what this. happened? Oh, okay. I didn't so, see this. Um, so Brittany, I want to pronounce her name wrong, Brittany Peach, maybe. Um, she was part of the sales team at Cloudflare. Um, and she recorded herself getting fired. Oh, I saw this. Yeah. Yeah, such a Gen Z approach. Yeah, she, so she did a full recording of this. herself getting um, fired. Yeah. She knew it was coming, so she kind of had she this. She knew. Yeah, so she kind of had this response of like, please give me more data. Give me like, what's my performance metrics? And the way that Cloudflare approached it is they um, brought on two HR reps, not her manager. So they actually had no data um, on the matters at hand. So they weren't able to give her anything. Yeah. So now there's two sides of the debate. You know, there's um, the Cloudflare side where they have the right to fire anybody they want, right? If yeah. you're not performing. And then you have the people on her side that are saying, you know, good for you, standing up for yourself. Um, obviously. But what's the basis of her standing up for herself? Her, I think the basis of her standing up for herself is she had an argument that um, she was brought on. She spent a month onboarding and then um, it was then holidays. Christmas yeah. holidays. And now it's the new year and you're saying I haven't performed, but I've only been here for two months. So her oh, argument is. Oh, it's kind of a strong argument. I've only been here for two months and the whole time I've been in the onboarding in the holiday period. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. But their position is other people have performed. Okay. You were getting within other, that two months. Like, yeah, okay. compared to other people, your metrics aren't. Was this part of a greater layoff? Or That's what they were saying. So there was this yeah. narrative that it was just, you know, they overhired and now they had to cut, cut back sure. and they didn't handle it properly. The CEO came out and said, well, this is what we normally do. We hired about 10%, so uh -huh. 40 out of like 1,500 employees in the sales staff. And this is just normal. If you're not performing, you get cut, right? Like It's cutthroat so, business. Yeah, yeah, sales is a cutthroat uh, business. I, I looked at this and I thought, this is classic Gen Z. Now, all the Gen Z is going to hate this. Uh, <laughs> but this is classic Gen Z where it's like, hang on. Uh, I, you don't get to do this to me. And now she's recorded herself. That's crazy. So anytime she goes for a future job, oh, totally. her name yeah. mm -hmm. just has to be searched. And everybody's going, do I want that problem? Mm -hmm. Well, that's where my mind goes, right? Because, okay, let's say she gets what she wants right. and Cloudflare Cl Cloud, uh, Flare Flare. hires her back. Right. Like, okay, yeah, what's that what? dynamic? Yeah. That's, that's what, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, are right. we thinking yeah. these things through? That's Does that make true. sense? No, but that's this is my classic, what I'm saying, like I see this with Gen Z all the time. It's like, whoa, whoa, they expect me to turn up early and mm. they expect me to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. actually do work and yeah. expect me to, you know, I've only been here for two months. Of course, I haven't made a sale yet, but right. it's two months. Like two months in the world of sales mm -hmm. is like, they're trying to find out, are you a salesperson or not? Do you have what it takes? Yeah, Do you have the chutzpah? Yeah. And after two months, if you haven't produced anything for the company, but we've forked out money in training and mm -hmm. we're for, like right now I'm projecting three months and going, no, nope, let's cut it now. Now, I just think what is in her mind? Yeah. Because she doesn't realize everything lives on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. So any future <laughs> job, she's literally hamstrung herself. Maybe her whole generation going, you go girl, you talk, yeah. but guess what? They're still going to get hired. Oh, right. Right. oh totally. Right. Totally. I don't understand. With their anonymous I comments. don't understand yeah. this, yeah. this generation. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but thanks for you doing it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Where do you think this privilege comes from? Because that's what it is, right? It's, it's, it's a trophy generation. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the participation Prosperity. award. Yeah. They've lived in a prosperous nation, mm -hmm. right, that's been, been set up. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's a cycle, Right. And so hopefully it swings back uh, when people realize, OK, this this type of mentality is not going to produce the next wave of innovation and prosperity for mm -hmm. the future. Um, well, I think it it's prosperity, crazy. but I think it's also uh, mediocrity. We, we've celebrated mediocrity. Culture. We've yeah. celebrated like remember, it starts at the grassroots level of yeah. kids sports. The participation, really, the participation yeah. trophy. They grew yeah. up pioneering the like <laughs> parents don't cheer on your child. Like, you're not allowed to cheer your child on. You have yeah. to cheer every child on. Yeah. Well, screw your child. I'm trying to friggin', <laughs> I'm trying to celebrate my child, right? And right. that's, but there's no competition. Mm -hmm. So it's participation. I deserve an award. I've been here for two months. I deserve an award. Yeah. No, no, yeah. you haven't produced anything. You didn't score a goal. Mm -hmm. 
There, we, and that's, I think, where society has done harm to this generation, where now they expect a participation celebration. Yeah. They expect that um, just on the milestone of you training for a month, you should yeah. get a little you know, badge or something yeah. or a promotion. Yeah. She's probably already submitted, hey, when is the promotion rounds? <laughs> Totally. Yes. I've been here two months and I've asked for yeah. two promotion. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't produced anything you, for a promotion. You know, this this culture is continuing to propagate because I, I coach Lennox's basketball team. She's eight years old um, on Saturday mornings. And, um, you know, most of the refs are cool. There's one ref that I had this past Saturday that is like this equal opportunity ref person who, who's like, will like tell the kids on defense to back up. Uh. And if... If he sees that one of the kids hasn't shot enough, we'll let them shoot for free. And I'm, I'm like having a conversation no with him. I'm like, this is not this is not going to build good basketball play. Mm -hmm. This is actually not going to build any character. This, like, build this nothing. is this is this is wrong. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and I, I also started realizing in this just this I was playing out this philosophy in my head because there is a couple players on our team. Uh, that definitely would be, you know, maybe considered ball hawks, okay? <laughs> um, you know, and they're, they're shooting the most and all mm -hmm. that type of stuff. At the same time, their skill level is like 2x mm. everybody else. Right. They are running harder than everybody else. Mm -hmm. They're stealing the ball more than everybody else. So I can't necessarily knock them too much. Do I want them to work on other parts of the game like passing and finding the open person? Absolutely. And mm. we're, we're trying to teach that. But... I'm not necessarily going to have the kid that doesn't work on his game all week be entitled to get the ball passed exactly. to. I don't even think that kid wants the ball passed to because <laughs> right, right. he's looking at me with like, there's I'm nothing there. Stare. There's yeah. nothing it's, happening. It's right? definitely, you know, you know, entitled. Yeah. It's entitlement. Mm -hmm. So what that ref is doing is he's creating an entitled generation where sure. everyone gets their shot. So I can just mosey on up the court, not hustle, <laughs> not sweat. Just mosey on up and go, hey, ref, uh, can I please have a shot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Absolutely. everyone goes, oh, you know, little Johnny needs to have. No, but but I, I agree with you. That's the coach's job mm -hmm. to teach, yeah. you know, passing, open man, all that kind of stuff. It's not the ref's job to no. democratize a competition. That means there's no competition. Oh, man, there's a government analogy in there somewhere. But <laughs> <laughs> so what it ends up producing is this girl. Oh, yeah. This girl is the product of uh, just democratized sports and democratized opportunities mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, how do equity, guys, division, how do inclusion. How you balance that in, like, the, the orgs that you kind of lead? Like, you get what you put in. Right. There's this aspect of we'll help you. You know, we're not going to turn our back on you, but you get what you put in the work that you put in. And if you see somebody, you know, moving up the chain, that's deserved. And if you're not, it's because of performance. But how do you balance that kind of, you know, well, they've been told a narrative that uh, it's actually not because someone's put the work in. It's because of a patriarchy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that there has been a patriarchy <laughs> out there that that's why they got promoted. It literally is a, a taught narrative that if anybody advances, it's because they've got a false uh, benefit mm -hmm. or they've got like a, a patriarchal benefit. That's not real. What's real is the fact that they put the work in. Mm -hmm. So because they put the work in, that's why they're getting ahead and they're getting the opportunities. And I think that we're going to continue to see more of this entitlement uh, culture on display while we keep at the grassroots level, don't teach kids how to lose. That's the problem. Mm. She doesn't know how to lose. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know how to go, I lost my job. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll make myself better so I don't do that again. Right, right. She's missing the lesson in the failure. Mm -hmm. Instead, she's trying to go, no, 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 you don't get to do that to me. I deserve this. You know, it's like, it's so cool how faith is also so practical. Mm -hmm. It's highly spiritual, but it's like so practical, right? Because without um, a relationship with the Savior, without a, a Lord and Savior to be able to, you know, people don't know how to process suffering and struggle and failure because they don't have a format of faith, mm -hmm. right? It's um, it's this, this idea that, okay, somebody, something, some entity owes me something. Mm -hmm. They don't have any, so that's their framework they're yep. trying to navigate, right? Um, and we're creating new religions. We're creating new frameworks. We're creating, you know, um, you know, DEI, that is a, that's a religion, mm -hmm. right? That is a, that's a framework. That's mm -hmm. a culture, right? And things like that to try to make sense of this world, um, mm -hmm. where the, the answer is actually found in, in our faith. Mm -hmm.
I just wanted to... Great um, spiritual spin on my little rant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just brought it back. All right. <laughs> so I'm here for guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about one thing that you guys um, discussed on a like one of the earliest pods um, in the high pod. And actually, you meant... It Throw was it back. Like, it, it was a lot for me because okay. it was during a time when the first time in my life that I was dealing with actual burnout and you guys talked about oh, wow. you know burnout and then you talked about the reason of that is like the comparisons that you put on you know your situation to other people's situation mm. and it was and that moment for me was really really big and so wow. I kind of wanted to touch on a lot of this um talk about like stress anxiety um that you can might be able to go through depending on what your you know state is if you're like a leader at a company you're building something um and so there's this post on Twitter that I saw uh, from Shane Parrish and he talked about um, thinking about this as like surface area. So um, the little that you have, mm-hmm. you know, this is like your surface area when you're at one home, you mm-hmm. know, the small home, your first home. Yep. But then as you start to grow, maybe it's like your wealth, you have different investments. Now your so- surface area grows. You have all these different investments that you have to manage. Now you have a bigger house, bigger family. All your surface area continues to grow. Yes. Even your faith, even as your faith is growing, you have to like balance, oh, I need to justify this faith to other people. So that grows the surface area. And all of this, as you're trying to manage all these things, can bring about stress. And even as you grow bigger, if you try and scale that out, you have like assistants that take it on for you. That just scales your surface area, but doesn't like abstract it away because you're still having to manage what they're bringing in. They're actually bringing in more surface area. Yes. Um, so he talks about this idea of what we really want, what we really don't want is more. We actually want less to be able to focus on a few things really well. Totally. But what we think about when we're really stressed is, oh, I wish I had more time. I oh, wish I had sure. more money. I wish I had more of this. But that's actually what's causing your stress. Um, and so I just wanted to like get your thought about it, get your thought about like the faith aspect of it, um, and then maybe we can help some people that are dealing with this. I mean, this is such a great question because I don't, and I don't know if anxiety is avoidable. I think it's manageable. Mm. I think you've got mm. to learn the skill of uh, handling anxiety, you know, and that's why you start small. That's why you start with one house because can I manage that mortgage? Mm -hmm. And if I can prove that I can manage that mortgage, then let me add another house, an investment property. You know, you don't get to just go, I want less because guess what? You can't just decide I want less kids. Mm -hmm. You got, you got kids and you're going to grow, but the stress actually comes from having more to lose. That's where a lot of anxiety comes from. We used to say this when we first started the church. Like we were so risky because we had nothing to lose. Mm. But then you start getting campuses, finances, people, properties. You actually have something to lose. So it actually tempers the way that you can risk and the bold decisions, right? Totally. So, so you've got to, if you want to be able to scale, which I think is should be the desire of growth, expansion, you have to get good at managing uh, pressure, anxiety. So it's not wanting less Mm -hmm. i think it's being able to do more with less okay so okay i was just someone asked me uh today in a conversation we're doing some mentoring and they said like i'm seeing you like pop up in this country in this country you're always on on a flight you're meeting with all your campus pastors how do you actually give them how, how is that time even effective when you're in and out? And I said, yeah, sure. Like if I go in and have a meeting, if I, if I rent a boardroom and we sit over a board table and we go through some strategies on how to build the church, that time is not going to be as effective as me deciding, you know, when I go there, I'm doing life. Mm. So we're going to actually go for a walk. We're not sitting in a boardroom. We'll go get a coffee. Mm-hmm. We're going to go and eat some food. Now, guess what the conversation is going to be? It's going to be the same as I have with Vance here, mm-hmm. where we do life together all the time. Yeah. We go for a run, we go for coffee, we go do something. Well, we're going to start talking strategies, business, church building, but we're going to do it while we're doing life. So we're doubling effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got to do more with less. Mm-hmm. While I've got a small time, I can't just sit there and go, I don't get to, I've got anxiety. I don't get to know my campus pastors or build with them. No, let me do it all together. Mm. So I think it actually teaches you the pressure of anxiety teaches you to be more effective with less time. Yeah. And I do think there's a trap in the more in the sense yes. that that more is the thing that's going to help you overcome mm-hmm. the anxiousness, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I feel like I've been living it the last three years of just like in the VC back startup world, it's kind of that um, startup factory model where you raise a pre-seed, then a seed, and then a series yeah. A and a B. And mm-hmm. we're at B now. So mm-hmm. praise God, you know, but I always had in the back of my mind, oh, okay. Like, all we have to do is hit these milestones, these metrics. We're going to unlock this next round mm-hmm. of funding. And then, mm-hmm. and then yeah. I'll be good, you know, and, and, I, yeah. and I, you know, I'll have a little bit less stress and all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. 
And I, I was literally uh, talking to Kim the other day. I was like, you know what? Like, we, we tell this to other people, but I need to apply it to myself. We're, we're not going to have peace unless we just choose to have peace. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's not going to come from the Series C now. It's mm-hmm. like, it, I've, I've, I'm convinced now. It's like, it, it's, not a, it's not an amount in, in the bank account. It's not a certain amount of customers. It's not a milestone or a metric. Praise God for those things that keep us um, having an appetite for more. I, I don't think more is wrong. But the peace is not in the more. <laughs> and I agree. And I don't you think, know. I don't know, I'm not convinced that anxiety comes from more. No. I think anxiety comes from you having more, but still seeing somebody else has more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's anxiety comes from your your perimeter or your perspective of how many people, what they've got compared to what you've got. Mm-hmm. That is what builds the deficit and the anxiety. And you feel like I should be further along mm-hmm. or, you know, I'm so far behind the ball. Yes. You know, I'm in my thirties and I'm not married. I don't have a house. And all of a sudden that mm-hmm. gets you anxious. Yeah. yeah. I learned something. So first time ever in my life, I'm doing uh, like a pretty disciplined Bible in a year program. I just, you know, we don't typically teach that or preach that at Vive, but it's just something I decided, you know what, I want to do this personally, um, just as a discipline in my life. And, you know, I'm not even doing like a Bible in three months or anything, but like, honestly, a Bible in a year, if you're actually like um, digesting it, doing a Devo with it, it takes quite a bit of time. Like, I'm just like, oh my goodness, like, this is like 45 minutes in and I'm (laughs) still going through this. And for me, the way my personality proclivity is, is like, (laughs) I'm I'm excited to get to the next thing. I want to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of goals, you know, all that type of stuff. This has been such a healthy discipline for me because it's totally slowed down my morning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not getting to the next thing until I finish this, Mm -hmm. right? And it feels like a sacrifice. It feels Mm -hmm. like a tithe of my day to God. I think there's something spiritual in that. But what I've learned from it is that my goals are not shifting, right? I'm still very ambitious. I'm still going to get to that thing. But maybe I get to it a little later. Mm -hmm. Sure. (laughs) So whenever you actually lengthen uh, your timeline that you just kind of created and conjured up yourself and you submit it to God and be like, hey, you know, goal's the same. Mm-hmm. Maybe instead of in two days, it's going to be in two months, mm-hmm. right? To, to reach that ambitious goal. And I'm just using, you know, random numbers. Um, anxiety just dissipates. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're like, you know what? Like, that feels great. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lessening myself. I'm not going to lessen the goal or the ambition, but I'm going to put it in a framework of God's timing Um, where he can bless it and he can speak to me through it. And the way my personality is wired, my personality is wired, I think the slowing down for me actually makes me more methodical. It makes me more effective. Um, so, so that, that's where I've felt anxious before. It's like what you just said. It's like, you just have these timelines, these comparison timelines. Oh, mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta get to this number by this age and you yeah. know, all that type of you stuff. You just did a really good parallel between what's running and what's rushing. Mm, mm. So good. Cause I think you need the freedom to run. Yeah. You know, if you want to run at some goals, you want to run at life, run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you're rushing just to get things done, then you feel like it's all slipping through your hands. Good. Um, you know, it's like if you try and sometimes life feels like you're gripping sand and it's fallen through your fingers. Well, guess what? Add some water to it. Just add wow. some structure to it. Mm-hmm. Add some format and you'll build something with the thing that's slipping through your hand. Mm-hmm. And I think you got to just start to think, what's the thing I'm missing? It's not doing less sand. It's adding more water. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I think the really cool thing about um, what you both of you guys are saying is that um, like slowing down, right? Like when you're running this race and then we kind of say we're doing it together, but God's timing for me is different than God's timing for you sure. or for you, right? And so if you can separate those things, maybe you won't compare yourself to somebody Good. else because you'll be able to understand that, you know, I just have to work through this in my time because God is going to work it in my life at that time. But it's just so hard to do sometimes because like you said, it's like, I think it's like a maybe human nature, but like it's almost tribal to be the more is good for in the group, right? Like if I have more, it looks better when I'm in a group, but by myself, like I just have more and it can just lead to unhappiness. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's that, I think it was a podcast you were on recently. Uh, someone said a quote, I mean, you can get through the rat race, but at the end you're still a rat. <laughs> yes. Our friend, uh, Lee yeah, Domain. I thought good. that was, I thought that's it was good. brilliant so because good. you've got to get out of, you're the rat race. Rat. <laughs> You've got to get into a different race. Mm-hmm. So if you so want to be in the rat race, you'll still end up winning and be a rat. Mm-hmm. You just yeah, be a winning wow, rat. Wow, 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 wow. Or do you want to get into a different race? Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's the running. It's what race are you running? Mm. Who are you competing Brilliant. against? Mm-hmm. You're competing against the other guy at the job or the other founder? Or are you just in the lane compared to your calling in Christ Jesus? 
So that's why that. Paul the Apostle said, I run to win. Mm. He didn't say do less. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, hey, you know what, guys, let's not stress. Let's, let's not have anxiety. He goes, I have the daily burden of how the churches are getting along. Mm-hmm. But he's like, but I'm going to run this race to win. So he's not running against any other minister or any other apostle. He's running compared to the calling that's on his life. Mm-hmm. And that is so brilliant because you know what the comparison thing is doing in our generation, um, like in this moment of time, is it's forcing everybody, everybody to buy a cold plunge. <laughs> that's like literally what's happening. It's like everybody wants the same morning routine right, right now. It's right. like maybe that's not your morning routine, dude. It's like, yeah. it's like everybody's like flexing there. At 4 a.m. I do morning right. meditations. Right. And at 4.15 I do a thousand push-ups. And at 4.30 I do a cold plunge to wake up my so, lymph nodes. And it's like, so dude, what the back heck? Back to what you were talking about before about the church app. Mm. Maybe there's a difference between competition and comparison. Mm. Good. Mm-hmm. The church is stuck in comparison. Mm. We need to get into competition. Mm-hmm. Because competition's healthy, nice. comparison's nice. toxic, and anxiety comes from comparison, not competition. Wow, that's really good. I love I'm that. Type that, I love that. We need sound <laughs> effects. Deck. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a moment. That was a moment. That's huge. And I think the the last part I want to talk about is how important this is um, for leaders because I think it comes down to what you guys were saying, where it's if you can take this in and slow down, you won't be so reactive to, yes. you know, what different changes are. And we kind of talked about it, you know, your personality type is that you don't, um, like dealing with surprises. You had to go through a season right, where right, you right. were, yep. you know, kind of able to do that. And as a leader, you are going to have so many sorts of surprises, but yep. as somebody that's following a leader, that leader has to be calm. Shaq talks about it all the time. Right. If the general oh, isn't panicking, totally. you know, your army won't be panicking. hundred percent. Right. If you are in the heat of it, yep. the guy at the front cannot be having a panic attack because nope. yep. nobody else is going to be able to follow that. No. Nope. Um, and so like, how do you guys as leaders take this on? Like what kind of, cause you have to take this on, right? Like you're at the front of the lines, but you know, how do you guys take this on dissipated? I always say if my team's worrying, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. And if my team isn't worrying, I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because as long as someone's worrying, then I can be like, okay, let's calm. Mm-hmm. Because there's always a job to do. Now I'm, I'm joking with the worrying. I don't want them that stressed out. But I want them to feel the pressure. Mm-hmm. And I think what oh, uh, I, I want, that's what helps me be calm as long as they're concerned and they're caring about stuff. Then I can focus on what's yet to come. But if, if the team is, you know, nonchalant, I'm like, hey, have we thought about this? Are mm-hmm. we, are we, yeah, because no one seems to be racing. Mm-hmm. Like the world's on fire you, and we're how, here to save it. How do you address it? that? If, if, you, if you discern that somebody is not really concerned enough, what, do you, what, are some, what are some practical tools? I start to ramp up the concern. Okay. Yep. And then it, it flows on. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I'm, I've got to use concern as a, as a metric of speed, uh, diligence. What are we doing? Are we doing our job? And so I think now the team knows that if I'm getting concerned about something, they better start Mm. you know, brushing their teeth and combing their hair and figuring this out. Like, hey, let's let's show up because, mm. you know, pastor's really on this. But I think that that's the job of the 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 leader doesn't have to be calm all the time. Mm. That's a myth. Mm-hmm. If the, like, okay, let's take, uh, you know, let's take Stephen Curry and the Warriors are down in a final with 10 points to go and we've literally got two minutes on the clock. Yeah, he's rolling the team mm. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not being like, hey, guys, let's just be calm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's like, guys, we are going to make this. Right, like there's right, going right. to be an urgency. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you need to know when I push the urgency because the mm. team don't get it. Mm-hmm. And when do I calm the ship? Right. I've got to have both gears. Yeah. dynamics. I've mm. got to be a dynamic leader. And what does, it's the zig, when everything's zigging, you got to zag. It's mm. that whole, i got to counteract as a leader mm. to balance the boat. Right. And, but, and then as you're going through it, like just keeping the Steph Curry example, how you bring that urgency is very important, right? With a positive kind of outlook, right? It can't be like you're doing a really bad job and this is the moment when I need to tell you that. It's- Sometimes people need to know that though. Let's stop mm. patting people. Okay. Let's stop patting the environment of our workplace to be like, hey, it's not that you're doing a bad job, but you could do better. No, you, you suck right now, okay? <laughs> and I'm carrying extra load because you suck. Hmm. So what if we get better together? Right. So I think so what, what, what Steph is going to call out is, is that sometimes just get me the ball mm-hmm. and I'll put it in mm. because the goal is more important than you feeling empowered as a basketball player right now. Right. Col- Kobe told people they suck. Yeah. yeah. And, That's true. and at the end of the day there, uh, I think at the same time he needs to rally urgency, but reinforce victory. Mm. We're going to win. Mm-hmm. It's there not, you go. There I'm you go. sure he's not 
going to mm. sit there with 10 seconds or 10, you know, two minutes to go and be like, guys, I just don't want to lose. Right, right. No, he's like, I want to win. Mm -hmm. right. So the motivation isn't negative. Like, guys, I just, I can't walk out of here loser. Mm -hmm. I can't walk out of here losing this game. No, it's like, we're going to walk out of here victor victorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need a winning team right now. Can mm -hmm. you step up to the plate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good tool right there. Like, you're better than this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Call yeah. them higher. We're the championship team. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're better Two than minutes this. are going to determine whether the championship <clears throat> team, but I see us as the championship team right now. Right. So let's act like it. Mm. Let's act like we've already won. That mentality is calling the team higher. Mm -hmm. The greatest that's compliment that you can have for somebody is to expect more from them. Right, mm -hmm. is to yes. expect much from them, yeah. and it's um, different from saying, "Hey, I see you as a champion, no matter mm -hmm. what we do." No, <laughs> no, no, because if we lose, you literally, I can't say I see you as the champ because mm -hmm. we're not. Right, but right now, I believe we have the potential to be championship team. Yeah, are you a, a coach, a leader, or CEO, or are you that ref? Yeah, CEO, mm -hmm. where you're you're trying to block out all the defense mm -hmm. and make yeah. it calm environment. Exactly. and it's it's gonna be all okay, guys. Like yep. the economy is actually fine. Yeah, um, no no worries. Right. But please do your job. Um, hey, actually, here's a free shot. You know, <laughs> it's like no, that's not how the world works. I mean, you think about how how it works. Whether it's LeBron, uh, whether it's uh, Steph, everybody knows. Get the ball. They're going to get the ball to that player. Oh yeah. But we still get the ball to that player mm -hmm. because it's in their hands. It's as it's good so as in. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone knows. Stack your defense. Like they'll leave men open. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Steph will have three people on him, but we'll still get the ball to Steph. Right. So it's not a surprise what we're going to do. He's just got a victorious mentality. Mm -hmm. So good. I oh, that's that. really good. I had some follow-ups, but. That's it. If you if you restate the goal, yep. and that's the goal, no matter what, but, you don't have to know your audience. You don't have nope. to treat anybody a little differently. Nope. To kind of, but you gotta just restate the goal. And if the goal is a focus, you're good. That that's what I love about this pod. You know, I had three people come up to me literally this past Sunday, um, and I was so encouraged by it that uh, we're saying they've been following the podcast, the hype podcast specifically. It's been a blessing to their life. It's, all three people wanted to reinforce to me that they never saw themselves as an entrepreneurial type person. They never saw themselves as a tech person, hmm. but they love this podcast because it gives them a window. Mm. It gives them kind of breadcrumbs into understanding this world a little bit more. And it's not like we were like, oh, okay, we got to do a demographic, psychographic analysis so that we can speak the language mm. of whoever we're targeting. So, you know, we're going to have these conversations and we're going to allow people, we're going to just assume that they're smart and they have yeah. an appetite yeah. and they're going to want to dig in and learn more. And so shout out to all the people that are listening and thank you for continue to tell us that you're listening because it's encouraging yeah. mm -hmm. um, because it does feel like um, a really cool format to be able to communicate some of these ideas. Can we uh, invite them then to FlowCon? Yes. FlowCon, March Flo 6th. So it's happening. Uh, overflow.co slash FlowCon. Um, there is all the information on there right now. It's live. It is live. And check this out. There is a double header Hype, hype session, session wow. event. Yeah. One is going to be on scaling. Yep. Scale masters. Another one is going to be on values and ventures. Yeah. And check this out. We have a star studded lineup. Some of these people, you might not recognize their name, but that's okay because the, their achievements, what they've been able to Oops. pioneer in the kingdom right. um, is incredible and so uh we have pastor dino rizzo he is the president and executive director we'll put in the show notes um yeah there you go Flo there we go overflow.co slash flow con he is the executive director of arc churches literally in the past decade plus they've launched over a thousand churches yes. in America. There's about 5,000 churches, a part of their network. Their reach is in the tens of thousands globally. We got Jens Jacob, executive producer of After Death. Yes, um, He's done a couple other Hollywood films. Literally, his movies are in thousands of theaters, have been yeah. distributed to thousands of theaters across America. Also founder of a tech company called Saturation.io yep. with some big investors coming in there. Uh, who well, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Lambert. Lambert. Lisa yeah. Lambert. I mean, she's a uh, she's a, an investor, um, and she she runs a three billion dollar fund. Incredible. 
She's ex, uh, I think, WNBA player as well. Oh, college basketball. Oh, one of the that. two. But, I love uh, that. She's just an incredible human being and uh, part of our church in San Jose. So um, good. But we've also got Mackie Saturday, oh, my brand goodness. genius. Yes. Uh, one of the brand architects, uh, creators of identities that you've seen, like Instagram, mm-hmm. Oculus. Yep. A firm. Yeah. <laughs> These are iconic brands. That and he's, he's a venture capitalist of. now too. And he's a VC. He's actually on our board at Overflow. So I know him pretty well. I mean, this lineup. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> if you are a, a pastor um, or a church leader that, you know, might feel stuck and yeah. you need to get in the atmosphere of innovation, you yeah. got to get unstuck. You got to learn how to scale. You got to be in the room. If you're a CEO, yep. if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a startup guy or girl, if you are an innovator, if you are just maybe on the sidelines mm-hmm. wanting to peek in, mm-hmm. this is for you. It's literally only $50. 50 bucks. <laughs> Plus, one something that we actually really really intentionally do is connection time. Yes. We make networking a priority because how often do you get to be around like another couple of hundred super intelligent people that you could make a connection with who may be that one connection away from your breakthrough, from your next business, or just somebody that you need in your world that Mm -hmm. you didn't know who's going to illuminate something. You need to be at the event. You have to be in the room. You got to be at the event. You got to be in the lobbies. Yeah. You got to be part of Wednesday night after all the sessions, Kingdom Network Party. Yeah. We got mm. food trucks coming yeah. in, the lobbies, the parking lot's going to be just filled with like-minded people wanting to change the world. Yep. And like Pastor Adam says, you're one connection away from your breakthrough. But this is going to be uh, uh, you know, a two-parter because the next day, Vive Run Club, which has gotten kind of mini viral. Oh, yeah. it's out of control. <laughs> it is out hey, of control. Hey, this control. morning's run, bro, so I'm fun. telling you, Vance really? is on another level of fitness. Oh, no, wow. no, no, I'm not. My uh, goodness. I'm not. <laughs> they were hitting like a seven minute mile pace this morning. I couldn't Jeez. even keep up. Oh, man. We did uh, six miles. Pastor Adam had us on this trail around Google. Mm-hmm. So we had a Google group run. Yeah, it was fast. It, it was, was fast. It was fun. And here's the thing. We're going to do that event uh, collectively. Anybody yep. that wants to join in yep. uh, the morning after with an exclusive uh, pastors and leaders lunch um, or breakfast, actually, with me, Pastor Adam, some of our guests that are flying in, uh, yep. more intimate setting if you want to add that onto your registration. But overflow.co slash flowcon. I think we'll probably at that one talk about the relationship of a pastor and a business leader in the church. That'd be important. Mm. That'd that's, be important. That's something that I think we would love to dialogue with and we've helped people out before, you know, around that dynamic and that relationship. That partnership is so important yeah. in the kingdom. Yeah. Um, it really that cannot is. be underestimated. We need more. Yeah. We need more people yep. that are thinking that way. And uh how to do it successfully. So yeah, that'll be fun. Is there a limited go. number of tickets for this? I think we're gonna cap it at somewhere between two and three hundred. Yes. Ooh, we're yes. Still you gotta sign up. Yes. Yeah. I think Do actually, um, you know, uh, there's already probably a hundred that's been reserved. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of launched it through some of our private channels. Yeah. Yep. And so if you're listening to this, you, you should go to the website now and just register. Yeah, you've got early access. you got to get in there. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, link will be in the show notes, but overflow.co forward slash Flowcon. Yes. Flowcon hype network session doubleheader is going to be so fun. Header. Let's go. I'm going to be training for that Vibe Run Club. I wanted to come today, but I'm too slow. We're well, going to run come. casual. We'll run casual. Cool. We'll run one. casual. Right, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we'll have different yeah. groups. And I'm working on it. I'm doing everything. Every day, something new is hurting. Oh, but that's excellent, there. though. I'm getting there. You're working <laughs> your way stronger. through the kinks. I'm working way through the kinks. Everybody you look said, good, man. Thank you, man. You look really good. And I love this podcast. I come here for the compliments. All right, guys. Great pod. God bless.